welcome back to the channel. Oh, it looks like there's a little change of plans with this car. It looks like we're uh, just going to do the old buff. Buff the compound in a multi speed buffer. Clear coat is in a rattle can. I just didn't want to risk it for the money I spent on that. It just wasn't worth it. So now I'm just waking up any water. Get ready to get ready to start peeling some of the paper back. Get her ready to take her out soil at least to see. And see how good of a job this actually did. Yeah, having water on your fresh paint is probably not ideal. Especially when it's not even a week old yet. So I'm using a, I'm using a clean microfiber towel. Not an old one. This is a brand. Hammer new, out the package. I know we're trying to do this car on a budget, but when it comes to this stuff, sometimes you just got to spend the money on certain things to help your job go better. Make sure we get all the water off. We're not going to buffer today. I just ordered a buffer from you know Amazon, so it's one of the finest top Chinese ones that they had. You can remember, still doing this under budget, but it was the best one with the best reviews, and it came with pads, a wall pad, wax pads. It came with a lot of gear, and it was just a little over 100 bucks. And that does seven inch and six inch. So, let's see this fine brand new windshield that I had put in here that took me two years to get because Speedy Autoglass could not get me the, the glass. When they finally did, it was exactly two years to the month. So this would have been July of... 2020 I ordered this windshield and I just got it this July 2022. It's all new Hey, your windshield's in. Cool. Only took two years. And then when I get it, because this car didn't have the tent across the top, it has a tent across the top. So, what do you do? Whatever. This car is not a show car. It's not going to win the Concord Elegance. It's not going to Bear Jackson. This is going to go to Sobeys up here in Shelton and probably get door named. Or I'm going to take it out of town and drag race it. And burn tires, blow tires up, maybe destroy a quarter panel. I don't know. It's only up. It's my first muscle car. Well, it's not a muscle car, I understand. But we're going to make it that way. We did with what we got. Would I love to have this to be a 69 Charger? Love to have a sec second generation Charger. Or 70 Plymouth Roadrunner. Basically the same car, just, you know, it looks really good. Love both of those cars. But this, my buddy Jimmy fucked me up with this car. It's hard to find. Anything from Chrysler that's a two door and have a V8 rear wheel drive. It's just not good. We're not getting it these days. There she is. Brand hammer new windshield. Ah, isn't that nice? Coming to you today do this because hey, I have to work night shift tonight. Of course it's the first the first shift. So trudge step last night. Still have to move. 130. Fell asleep in the chair and woke up at 3 o'clock in the chair. Went to bed and woke up about 830. So I'll be <laughs> So guys and gals, give you a little tip and trick here. 
this tape is this is sometimes the most nerve-wracking part of a paint job is removing tape from close areas especially doing this you know not having a clue what you're doing just be very careful take your time go slow this isn't a rush this isn't a race like we're not we don't have a drag race we gotta be to in like an hour take your time the more the more time you take now the more time you're gonna have driving or you're just gonna have an ugly spot in your paint job if you just don't really care you know you see I didn't tape very very well I got some of the chrome I don't know I, th I think that chrome might become body color anyway because it's got more scrapes and pits and racks into it and I'm pretty sure it's aluminum going into it. But just take your time guys and also too try not to get the tape onto your fresh paint I'm not saying they'll pull it but it could be a good risk especially if you're using like rust paint because this stuff usually takes a good seven days to fully cure I did put automotive hardener into it after 48 hours they say it's cured but I still go by the properties of rust paint it takes a long time to dry but we'll be right back yeah so now we're on to the passenger side which I just discovered on the driver's side looks like a cat tried to claw its way up the door great hopefully with my cutting buff that we're able to get it see look how look how great these tents are eh? when they get a little age on them view flats coming soon did a little video just to discuss but anyway and who we'll continue going here yeah, this is the worst part of this peeling this back you always want to pull down and away try to keep it like that possible especially especially guys and gals if you're got a hard line you're painting exist to existing paint Ooh, that's scary there Ooh, I don't like that See, this was this is what we're gonna like about this channel eh? we're gonna we're gonna learn from my screw-ups how about that because there's probably gonna be plenty of them I am no way shape and form professional body man let's just put that out there right now when it comes to body work I despise it respect the guys that do it I respect them a lot people just don't understand when you go to a body shop and they say I mean, it's gonna cost that this extra man a thousand dollars geez he tried to rip me up no there's a reason why they, they charge the money they do it's a lot of work to this the prep work unreal like if you want to do a really bang up job this car still would be here in body work because well, it's like doing drywall you gotta you gotta pay attention to the to your finished product I'm like a rough thing carpenter be like the same same thing I can you know I know fundamentals of mechanics and stuff but body work I like to shine things up don't get me wrong look good I look good but I'm no body far from it <laughs> Yes, we're kind of on a hill in here too, right? We're not level. So I'm holding the door. It doesn't screw up the side of the tent because right now, according to how easy this paint scratched, it's probably not fully cured yet. What do you guys opinion on body work? What do you what do you guys and gals do? 
Do you do your own? Do you enjoy it? Or are you a body person? What are your thoughts? Am I a half ass hack here? <laughs> Which I don't care. It is what it is. We're doing this for fun. Nothing's gonna, you know, this crappy body work. That's what everyone's probably saying, geez, you put yourself down. Well, we call a turd a turd here. If it's a turd, it's a turd. I'm not gonna call it a cupcake. If it's crap, it's crap. No beating around the bush here. The interior is horrible. Look at that. One of my good buddies, he has a, an Aspen. This is a 76, I believe. Carter's name is. He's a good young fella. His, his family has a body shop. He knows what this is all about. But he, he hooked me up with a set of bucket seats for this car. Also, the trims for the the back window here, actually, right in the car, ready to go, as you can see, ready to go, that's going to go in, debating on either painting this body color or, or black, maybe a satin, because I really like to do a satin or a flat black, kind of give her that, you know, that old school kind of vibe, maybe some of that new school flair. Anyway, I'll get back to peeling this off and we'll see you in a minute. So, in the trunk here. Yeah, I know. We didn't tape off the key lock because we probably cleaned it up with some all fine steel wool. Oh, yeah. First, I what you guys are going to say right off the get go. You didn't paint in the trunk. You didn't paint there. Why? For me to know that it's orange? This is the original body color. Like, this is the factory cream typical Dodge color. Back in the day. <clears throat> like I said, this car is just for fun. Taillights, I just cut it cut piece of cardboard stuffed in there because the people who painted this before didn't remove the tail lights and they just taped up so there was cream color still in this spot here and you could see it on the edges it would look real that look that looked really bad like you know so did I do a better job than them probably a little but not that much better. And for the marker light holes, I just ran some tape inside. So, if anyone doesn't know what I did to this car, a little update on that, just to kind of catch up the speed, because I've had this car for a while. It's 2019. with this lovely, lovely fine off the window setup. And I saw the pictures of all the road runners and Aspens online that, you know, they had the nice bigger windows. So I tinted these, which, was, you know, I didn't go too dark. You can still, you can still roughly see through it. It's on like a 20% tent. A lot of that Canadian tire. My buddy sold me the car. He was graciously enough to hook me up with these. 
ship them all the way from Alberta for me. Like, these things are hard to get your hands on. And I tell you, I'm eternally grateful for those. This is going to smarten this car up, like make it look a little bit more of a muscle car. A lot of people get this car confused with a Nova. But oh, that looks so much like a Nova. Well, that's because this is probably the Nova's competition back then. This is sort of like, this car was made between a duster and a dart. If they had kids, this is what it would look like, I guess. I want to scratch the paint too bad. So there, back ends cleaned up here. We'll uh, we'll get ready to pull the cover off the engine next, and maybe do a little cold start for you guys. Welcome back, guys and gals. Now we're on to here. So what I did is just the wife went to the dollar store. And Grabbed me a drop, a couple drop cloths, just to put over the engine. You know, like you can see all the orange paint that was sprayed up in here. Yes, so I didn't do underneath the hood. No, I'm not going to paint it black. I'm going to paint it body color. That's why Dodge wanted it. My, it may not be this year, it may not be next year, but my initial plan is to soon take the engine out. Go through it, make sure you know that it's it's gonna be decent. Like the engines, believe it or not, if the speedometer is right and the brake pedal is the right brake pedal in the car, the speedometer says 43,000 kilometers, which is probably rolled over to 143,000. And everyone in the comments right now are, are probably sitting there losing their shit in their seat, saying, "Oh, that's probably got 240,000 on it." On the contrary. This engine's very, very, got really good compression. It doesn't burn oil. It floods right now. It definitely does do that. That's because the carburetor isn't set up right or I'm just idling it too much and foul the plugs up. But, you know, this hasn't been on the road since 2019. Sorry, went with the old school look on the red sport that Dodge used to like to do. He used to do the blackout treatment inside the grill. So I did that in the satin black. That's what I want to do the stuff on the outside of the body. Hopefully we'll... There. This engine, I did do a, I did do a fair bit of work. It came with a two-barrel poly, which didn't run very good. She was cold-blooded. Put it that way. She didn't, she didn't like the oil lock right off the get-go. You really had to sit there and let her warm up. But she was. I drove a lot of carburetor vehicles, but she, yeah, she did does not like it at all. She did well. So I re, I got the wrong intake for the wrong job because budget, you know, Paul was hired up for money and he came to me with an intake, aluminum 318, well, I should call it 318 Streetmaster Edelbrock, which is, you know, probably the wrong setup for this. It's a single plane. It has a weird octagonal shape inside of the intake like I've never seen a setup like that before I'm pretty sure it was made in the 80s so I put that on it's better than two barrel I do have a four barrel spread bore intake off 318 that I got from Carrier and good friend I was telling you to go to hook me up with the box seats he did hook me up with that engine that's how we met but anyway I put a brand new metal brock it's a 650 CFM I got it pulling 20 inches of mercury right now in my my gauge and time and set 13 degrees advance is what she needs to run which Dodge doesn't have that kind of marker on there so you know do the right thing you stick something there and you measure it from the 8 and the 10 and you put her up on top and go that's close she's 
starts great, runs great, doesn't overheat. Let's let's hook the battery cable up, shall we? See what happens. See if this battery's dead, because that's the story of my life. Dead battery. Yep. Story of my fucking life. We'll be right back. Alright, this is what we're going to do. We're going to use this. This here. This has been a godsend. I want to set company Christmas party. Will that work? I tell you. This thing amazes me. It's only the small one, 400 amp, I'm pretty sure. It's not very big. This thing here, 400 amp peak, starting 200 amp. I did a Jeep I bought for my buddy. A straight six, a little YJ. Mine's 10 outside battery, still in cold day. Grab this, the way so that's not gonna work. That was carbureted, that old Jeep. Minus 10, straight 6, 10W30 in it. Crank that over like nothing. And that battery, that was stone cold dead. And on the instructions it says, do not jump anything over a 4.6 liter. Well, I jumped a 4, 4 big block with that and I just never had, never had any issue at all. Let's see what happens. <laughs> battery wasn't really did any of that day, but did not. People, even the electric choke works. She even started coming down on her. Better.
want to help is if you disconnect your storm press. We'll be right back. Yeah, we had a hurricane here. Probably the oh, it was last Saturday. Hurricane Fiona rolled through the northern part of the province here in the southern part. We got hit it bad, but I had to figure out a way to get it blown away. We usually wrap around with bumper brackets. Enough. You know it's got the pegs in the ground. It's still kind of, if it gets soft here and it rains, the wind is taking the pegs and it's right up out of the ground. So I usually just, just ram the strap under the car, strap the car, run the strap under the car, hook it to a suspension piece, snug it up as I was letting the man on the jack, the car sit down onto the rack strap, just what I had from my car trailer, pull it up to the, the poles, give her a little ratchet until she snug, and it's not going anywhere. It's all right, suits look like. Doesn't have to say there have to be a wrench. It could be painting. 
It could be changing the engine. Heck, it could be doing interior. It could be selling. Something. You're doing your own work on your own cars. It's more satisfying than just send it to somebody else and say, there, good job. We'll get back. All right, let's take a walk around this thing. It's not a great sunny day today. Well, she's not. I know everyone's seeing the comments. Oh yeah, he said about rock aired on rock panels. That's what this thing came factory with. So guess what? I put it back on. I sanded it all. This head. It had a bad spot. Here, this is all steel made. I can show you. I still have the. You can see these seats are trash. That's what I said about the interior. Jeez, he's just destroyed. Oh yeah, we got the the back seat over here, but you can see. Oh yeah, I haven't finished in here yet. Just gotta come in and seam seal. Same on the other side, way over. Like I was saying too. See the brake pedal. Hardly anywhere on that. This is what the odometer says. The dash pads crashed. Yeah, I got a big monster tack in there. You just, you know, because I'm trying to make it, I guess we call it a faux muscle car for now until the engines are built up. So from here, see this line just kind of disappears all the way down here this was teetotally gone like it was there when I started but teetotally teetotally gone it was this corner My body fell there. Just, just, just a skim over this. But I had to make a piece, trace this out, cut it out, weld it in. This has got a, a thrush muffler on it, chambered one. Works really well. There's my run. That is pretty bad. Get her out in the sunlight. That don't. That doesn't look beautiful at all. This, this corner here was sort of the same deal. I had to rebuild it. And this is where the accident was bad, bad. Even worse than my body work was. And we're gonna run there. Like I said, she's not perfect. She's just a paint job. Listen, she's she's not she's not no, she's not a show car. We got her we we we're calling her a go car. Good to go. She's a roast duration. She's good to get on the road. We're going to restore it and drive it on the road as mechanically good as we can for as little money as possible. My buddy Brandon gave me two brand new headlights that he had for his Camaro and never used, so he gave them to me. It was greatly appreciated. Got them in already. So now I've got to weld on the front bumper bracket. I gotta paint my trim pieces still. There's little filler pieces that go in here. And then on the back bumpers the same way. In here. And straight back along here. Guys and gals, this, this car doesn't look too bad at all for what it is. I'm happy. It makes me happy, I'm happy. Oh little piece of tape there yeah the tape too eh? another little tip don't leave the tape on there for any more than 14 days according to what it says on the packaging so you're gonna struggle that should be enough for now but yeah she's got dents she used to have a vinyl roof 
So you might pick up where the vinyl, where the little pegs were to hold the vinyl down. Yeah, I probably could have skim coated it. I'm not doing it. I'm not just no. I'm not wasting body fuel. Solid. Now we can see you on the roof here. A little bug, he, I couldn't get him out. That mosquito hawk landed. Oh well. <sighs> so be it. We'll set her out in the sun here. Let her get her bake on, I guess. But anyway, guys and gals, thanks for joining me. Next video I probably will do. Not sure. I'm working nights now, so hopefully I get home early in the morning. I might be able to start getting ready to put my side windows in that would be really nice to have her watertight but anyway guys and gals thanks for tuning in and stay wrenching